Welcome back to Python scripting for GIS applications, a class at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, spring 2013. From our last session, your assignment was to write a script that would not equal two for the field ID. So the problem is, what is the operator that's used to symbolize not equal to? So one way to figure that out would be to use help and then we'll use help on our points layer and the function we're interested in. So we need help on set attribute filter. And <clears> the <throat> help is not very useful. It gives us a lot of information, but nothing about our operators. However, it does give us a website. So here it says, look at this about halfway through this document. So here's the website. So I pull up a web browser and I go to that website and here is the operator for not equal to. So this would be equal, not equal. So that's what we need to use. Okay, so we'll try it. So select all the points for IDs not equal to two, and then we'll print out those selected points. So it does indeed select all the points for IDs not equal to two. Okay, in this session, I'm gonna teach you about selection sets. And they're a very efficient way to select when you have to um, select for values that you can't basically specify a range. So for example, let's say we want to select all the points where ID is equal to one or ID is equal to three. We could do it this way, but an alternative way is to use a selection set. So if we use this selection set, we would just say in this set, and the set is basically anything that's legal values inside these parens. So in this case, find all the points where ID is in this set of values. So the set of values of one comma three. And the reason why that's more efficient is say, for example, you need to select 25 um, features with different IDs. If you did it this way, you would say, you know, ID is equal to one or ID is equal to three or ID is equal to five or ID is equal to seven, etc. This way you could just have your 25 values in this set. Okay, so then we'll double check to make sure this worked. So Alt P for previous. And it does indeed select from this set of values one comma three when ID's in that set of values. So then it selects those two points. Okay, so our set is defined by a left paren and a right paren. And in Python, there's a data structure called tuples, which have a left paren and a right paren. So for example, here's a tuple, and it's like a list, except you cannot change tuples. So for example, show me what is the um, second element in this tuple. So that's the second element. And let's say I want to change it. Well, you can't change tuples. So if I say change this equal to 999, I get an error and it says that tuple object does not support item assignment. So in other words, tuples are not changeable. Once you create them, that's basically what they are. But we can use tuples to our advantage when we're creating selection sets. So for example, um, we could say, here's our tuple of values that we want to select from, and then we'll make a query. So the query is going to be a string. So take this string and add it to our tuple converted to a string. So that gives us this string called query. 
So then we could use that in our select attribute filter. And then let's see what it did select. So Alt P for previous. So it does select using this string variable using that query. Okay, let's say we want to randomly select from our three points, two points. So what we'll do is we'll set our attribute filter to none. So basically unselect all the points. And then we'll double check, we'll say, well, what's the point count? Let's see, Alt P in, this should be points layer. So we should have three points that we have available. So we do have three points available. So now what we could do is we can use the random sample function and randomly sample a range from zero to our point count and give us two. So that will randomly sample from zero up to three, two items. And then what we'll do is we'll convert that to a tuple. And we'll call this choices. Okay, so then let's see what it randomly selected. So it randomly selected a set of values one and two, and we could do that a second time. And the second time through, it randomly selected a set of zero and two. So now once we have our choices, we could make our query. So our query, once again, is gonna be a string, and it's just, our first part of the string feature ID in plus our tuple converted to a string. So the query is feature ID in the set of zero and two. And then we'll use that as our attribute filter. Okay, and then we'll print out those selected features. So we'll loop through all the selected features. And I'm gonna print out the attribute values for all the fields I have. So I've got the feature ID, an ID field, a name field, and a value field. So indeed it does <coughs> randomly select two features. The first feature has a feature ID of zero, and our next randomly selected feature has a feature ID of two. Okay, you can also use uh, connectors to make compound queries. So let's set our attribute filter to none, basically clearing our selection set. So this would be an example of a compound query where we're gonna say, okay, my query is equal to ID equals one or our second field name is equal to B. So ID equal one or our second field will be name equals the B. And then we'll use that query in our attribute filter. And then let's see what it selected. 
So indeed, it selected um, ID is equal to one, so that was this field, or name is equal to B, and that was this field. Okay, the other connector is a connector and, so we'll try that. So we'll clear our selection set, and then we'll make a query. So this time my query is ID is in the set of ID values of one, two, or three, and name is equal to B. So both of those have to be true in order for a point to be selected. So we'll apply that query to our attribute filter. And then we'll see what was selected. So the only point that had an ID of one, two, or three and a name of B was point two. So in point two, its ID was two. So this is true. And for point two, its name was B. So the second part was true. So in order for this compound expression to work, both queries has to be true. This question has to be true. And this question has to be true. Okay, if you go to the NRM 638 website, I've got a PDF for you and you can download um, some sample data. So for this week's assignment, you'll have a choice and one choice will be working with a transect line. And ultimately what you're gonna do is for this transect line, write a script that creates 10 randomly located points along this transect line. So for the first time we run that script, these may be the 10 randomly located points. And the next time we run the script, there are 10 randomly located points. And we could run the script a third time, and then we'll have 10 more randomly located points. So you can work with that transect line for this week, or you can work with a parcels polygon data set so this is from the Fairbanks North Star Borough. So here are thousands of parcels, and ultimately what you're gonna do is write a script that randomly selects from these thousands of parcels. So here, for example, the script randomly selects 10 parcels from those thousands of parcels. And the second time around, we run the same script, and it randomly selects these parcels. And if you want, the third time around, we run the same script, and it randomly selects the parcels in green. So go to the NRM 638 website, and the PDF describing these problems and where to get the data are at that website.